Feast of Tabernacles. In Luke 1, 5, Zacharias was of the course of Abiah, which in Hebrew is Abijah. Abijah was the eighth course. This means that when Gabriel announced the birth of John to Zacharias while he was performing the temple duties in the eighth course, the time of the year would have been IR 27 to Sivan 5. That matches our June 1st to June 8th. After that, Zacharias would have had to remain another week because of the, uh, of the um, uh, Pentecost. So he returned home on or about June 15th. Now, I'm not trying to be cheap or dirty here. But uh, this man and his wife have been praying for years about her barrenness. This man, the angel of the Lord, appears to this man and says, when you get home, you and your wife are going to conceive and have a baby. I don't think he waited three or four weeks to spend an evening with his wife. Personally, I believe that the fellow couldn't wait to get home. Okay? So, we, we can pretty well nail down that date. You say, well, how do you know she conceived right away? The angel of the Lord was in the thing, man. <laughs> we're, we're not, there's no chance involved in this anymore. There's no, the percentages are all out the window. God's in this thing. She's going to have a baby. Now, human gestation is nine months. So, add it all up. John the Baptist is born on or about March the 15th. Jesus is born six months. The Bible's crystal clear. Jesus born six months after John the Baptist is born. You can't go six months from March and end up in December. You end up the same place you end up if you count the Passovers. You end up in the middle of September. That's the closest you can nail that thing down. Um, one more. Come to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter number 2. Boy, they would call us a cult. We got together and celebrated the Lord's birth instead of the high school homecoming game. <laughs> you know something? Jesus is called the first fruits of the Lord's harvest. And, uh, you know when they bring that harvest in, don't you? Bring it in the fall of the year. All right, number three, uh, Luke 2, verse 1. It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is, was called, Bethleh- is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary as a spouse's wife, being great with child. There is no record in all of history, religious or secular, of Roman taxing ever being done in December. Never happened. The Romans always taxed their provinces in the fall of the year. Why? Why? Because they weren't dealing with hard currency. They were dealing with produce. Today we call it the stock market. Because they used to deal with stocks. And the Romans taxed in the fall of the year because that's when the people had the most, we would say money, that's when they had the most property. Every government taxes when you got the most goodies. That's, that's the way those things go. Also, this was the time of the great feast in Jerusalem, with both, which both men and women were to attend according to the Jewish law. And so they knew that the best time to have all the people together, and the best time to have all the people with their pockets full of money, was in the fall of the year at the harvest. And that's when the Roman government taxed the provinces of Judea. Now, we do not believe that Joseph would have compelled Mary to travel a hundred miles 
in the ninth month of her pregnancy unless they had to be there. But you see how God works? Hundreds of years earlier, He said through Micah the prophet that at Bethlehem, that little city of Bethlehem of of Ephrata, that was the place where Messiah would be born. And if God Almighty has to set up a Roman government with powers of taxation to get that woman and that man in that city on that day, then that's what He's going to do. Now, wouldn't it have been something if, if a group of, uh, of uh, patriots who loved their belly more than they loved the Word of God had gotten together and overthrown the Roman government so there weren't any taxes to pay? Well, suppose the Maccabees had succeeded. You know what they would have done? They'd have overthrown the Word of God. Jesus wouldn't have been born in Bethlehem because Joseph and Mary wouldn't have had any reason to be there. So you know what the Lord said to do? He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Leave the government alone because for all you know, they're doing just what I want them to do. <laughs> Man, I don't want to put the rapture off another ten years. <laughs> If the bottom's got to fall out for us to get out of here, let her go, man. Get out of the way. <laughs> Quit popping the thing up. <laughs> I know that 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 bothers some people, but where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Get your treasure out of Chase, Manhattan, and get it in the New Jerusalem, and and you'll be ready to go home to heaven. Hey, Amen. Boy, this has been the most negative evening we had, Lord. He just he just gets everything. Um, anyway. In addition, the great September feast at Jerusalem would have increased the population of that city from a normal 120,000 to 2 million or more. Even surrounding towns such as Bethlehem, five miles to the south, would have been jam-packed. Thus, there was no room at the inn. It all fits. Now, I know know the question. I know what you're going to ask. It's a fair question. How in the world do we get to the place where all the professing Christians celebrate Jesus' birthday on December 25th? Well, once upon a time, boys and girls, <laughs> there was a man by the name of Constantine. And Constantine got together with the corrupt priesthood of the professing Christian church, and he realized that if you can't beat them, join them. And Constantine and the corrupt priesthood worked out this deal where the state and the church would merge. The state said, we won't bother the church anymore. And the church said, well, we won't bother the state anymore. And the state said, all right, fine. We'll bring our pagan Roman system into your church and you bring your church into our state and we'll all live happily ever after. For hundreds and thousands of years before the birth of Jesus Christ, the pagans worshipped the sun, moon, and stars. You know that if you read your Old Testament. Baal, or Baal, is the sun god. He represents the male deity or the male reproductive principle. Ishtar, or Ashtoreth, or Astarte, the moon goddess represents the female deity or the female reproductive entity. Therefore, all the pagan peoples of the world celebrate fertility and reproduction in the spring of the year. All of those celebrations center around Ashtoreth or Astarte or Easter, whatever you want to call her. And those celebrations are symbolized in the Hebrew countries by a a woman with 16 breasts so she can have lots of babies, or a woman with a womb the size of Saturn so that she can have lots of babies, or bunnies because they have lots of babies, or eggs because that's where babies come from. So the corrupt priesthood says, I'll tell you what we'll do. We get all these people that are excited about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we know that bothers you guys down there in Rome. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just kind of mix the two together. 
and will have us an Easter basket, empty tomb, a bunny resurrection, a egg sunrise service, uh, Jesus and the rabbit kind of a celebration deal, and nobody will get too upset. And that's why people don't like a King James Bible, because it says that the pagan Romans were celebrating Easter, Acts 12 and verse number 4, while the apostles were preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so all the new Bibles change that. They say Easter shouldn't be in there. You know why? Because they don't want you to know the pagan Romans were celebrating Easter before Christ rose from the dead. So they change it in all the new Bibles. That's why if you want to put a Bible in the Easter basket, you put an NIV in there. <laughs> you know. Now, so, so what happens with this, with this Christmas deal? Well, the, the winter solstice falls on the 21st of December. That's the coldest, darkest, shortest day of the year. And the pagans would watch. They would watch all fall. They would watch the days get shorter and shorter and shorter. They'd watch the temperature get colder and colder and colder. And they were scared to death. The sun god was dying. Listen, if the sun's your god and the sun's losing his power and the sun's fading out, you're in trouble. And they'd watch. And the 21st of December was the shortest day of the year. 22nd was just as short. 23rd was just as short. 24th, nothing happened. And on the 25th day of the year, that tide began to turn and the days began to get just a little bit longer and just a little bit warmer. And the 25th of December was the day that all the ancient pagans of the Roman Empire celebrated the rebirth or the the revival of Tammuz, the sun god. Or Baal, the sun god. Call him, call him whatever name you want to call him. But the 25th of December was the day the pagans celebrated the return of the sun god or the coming of the sun, the male deity, the male principle up there. So the Papa got together over there in Rome. He and Constantine, the corrupt priesthood, got together. And they said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just kind of get a, a Bethlehem's manger, Christmas tree, a Messiah, a sun god, a kind of a Baal Christmas, Mary and Joseph and Santa and the wise man and the whole thing out in the front yard and Frosty the snowman and Rudolph. And we'll just mix the whole thing together and everybody will be happy. You know what kills that Easter thing? You know what kills that Christmas thing? Down through time, there's always been just a few people who couldn't care less what everybody else in the world thought. They wanted to tell somebody what the Bible said and go by it. And they just keep wrecking the whole thing. Nobody can have a good time because somebody's always saying, but wait a minute, (laughs) point of order, (laughs) and just kills it. You know what those people do? They'd go out and cut down a tree and they'd call it a Yule log. And they'd throw it in the fire on the 21st of December and try and keep that thing burning, hoping the heat from those fires would revive the sun god. And the night of the 24th, Daddy'd go in, he'd throw away the Yule log and bring in a brand new evergreen and set it in the living room. And everybody would come out and say, Look! The Yule log came back to life! And they'd be so happy they'd give everybody presents to celebrate. That's just the way that thing goes. So the Lord said in Jeremiah chapter 10, Don't do that. Now, you can leave here tonight and you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to paint your face green on St. Patrick's Day, if you want to paint your face black on Martin Luther King Day, if you want to paint your, put uh, olive oil on your face on Columbus Day, help yourself. If you want to dress up and go trick-or-treating, I know times are hard, candy's expensive, help yourself. If you want, listen, you do what you look, you want to have Christmas and you want to decorate to the hill, that's between you and God. But between me and God, I've got to teach this whole book. And instead of just going off half-cocked and saying that bunch of fanatics down there, they're against Christmas and everything else... Find out what you're fighting against, and then if you want to fight against it, at least you do so honestly. At least you got something to stand on. But but find out. 
Um, we don't think everybody that celebrates Christmas going to hell. We don't think everybody that uh, you know celebrates December 25th is not saved. We've never said that. We've never suggested that. But I want to be right. When I stand before God and give account for everything I've done, I want to be right. I've said for years up and down this country, and nobody's taken me up on it yet, think what would happen. Let's suppose we pick December 25th. Let's suppose we pick September 21st. Pick, pick whatever day you want. But let's suppose on the day the Christian community decided was Jesus' birthday. Let's suppose we took all the money that Christians spend buying presents for somebody whose birthday it isn't. And they gave all that money to Jesus for missionary work. Can you imagine if you had the money that saved people spent in one year on Christmas presents, if they gave that to Jesus to celebrate His birth, what in the world could be done for Jesus Christ? It'd be remarkable, wouldn't it? But what would Grandma say? But what would Aunt Sue say? What would the next door neighbors say? I'll show you one more thing and then I'll let you go home and talk about me. Uh, Reve- Revelation, Revelation chapter 11. These fellows call me all the time. They say, Brother James, I think I'm called to preach. I say, all right, you need two things. You need a soft heart and very thick skin. <laughs> if, you, if you don't have both of those, you're, you're not going to make it. Revelation chapter 11. Now, now think about this. It's kind of a strange thing. I, I like to go through life with my eyes wide open and see what's going on. Watch this. Happy New Year. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy Easter. Happy Halloween. Happy Thanksgiving. Why doesn't anybody say Happy Christmas? Why do we say happy in front of every other holiday, but we don't say Happy Christmas? I'm going to show you something. In the middle of the Great Tribulation, There's two witnesses that are bugging this world and giving the Antichrist fits. And if those three Hebrew children in Daniel, if Nebuchadnezzar is a type of the Antichrist, and he is, we ran this thing through in the men's meeting, we studied Daniel. If Nebuchadnezzar is a type of the Antichrist, that fiery furnace is a type of the fiery furnace, and that image is a type of the image of the beast, then you know what that means? That means there are some male virgin Jews, that's what those Hebrew children were, who are dealing with the Antichrist face to face during that tribulation time and explaining to him from the Bible what's going on. That's something to think about? God's got 144,000 witnesses. They're male virgin Jews. And they witness during the time when the false image is set up and the fiery furnace is set up. And if you don't bow down to the image, you go in the fiery furnace. And the Lord's with them. And the Bible says that those Hebrew children in Daniel, every time something, hap- something new happened, Nebuchadnezzar brought them in and said, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Now watch what happens. These two witnesses get killed. Revelation 11 verse 9. Or verse 8, Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. You know what they're doing? These two witnesses get killed in the tribulation. They're making merry and exchanging gifts. If I was going to try and figure out a date for the Lord's coming, and I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't. I'm not fooling with it. I wouldn't begin to fool with it. But I've read, I've read two dozen books at least where a guy goes all through the Bible and tries to prove the date for the Lord's coming, and none of them has ever dealt with this passage right here. But you can nail that thing down. 
There's one time of the year when people make merry and exchange gifts. It has to do with the birth of that sun god. And then these guys are caught out. Nation of Israel's converted. Great calamities overpassed. Then comes the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, when's he coming? I don't know. I'll be with him when he comes. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I guess that's about it. Yes, sir. Well, well, you are going to get me in trouble now. Oh, there's only two. There's only two birthday celebrations in the Bible. Herod and who's the other guy? Who's Pharaoh? Oh, I know one's Herod, and the other. Um, neither one are very, very pretty. Now, uh, Lewis Carroll had the best idea. If you read uh, through the Looking Glass and what Alice found there. Um, Humpty Dumpty recommended that we celebrate our unbirthday so that we can get gifts 364 days a year instead of celebrating our birthday and just getting one. And uh, I think there's a great deal of wisdom uh, in that. Uh, listen, the Bible says this in Romans. It says, One man esteemeth one day above another. Another man esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. I am fully persuaded in my own mind that Sunday is no more sacred than Monday or Tuesday. I'm fully persuaded in my mind that uh, December 25th or, or the first Sunday after the full moon in the spring, I'm persuaded those days are no more sacred than any other day. Now, what you're persuaded of in your own mind is between you and the Lord. But please don't be persuaded based upon... Peer pressure. You were supposed to have gotten over that when you left high school. Be persuaded based upon what the Word of God says. Because after all, when we stand before the Lord, we're going to give account based upon what's written uh, in, in this book here. And we want to be found doing what Jesus would have us to do. So, All right, we'll pray together. I'll slip out the back door and you can stay in fellowship as long as you'd like. So, all right. Father, we thank you tonight for your Word. Lord, we're sure that everything that You've written herein is important. Uh, Father, for the world to make so much of something, a world that cares nothing for Your Word, uh, Father, uh, that should warn us that there's some danger uh, in, in that area. God, we just pray that You'd help us to uh, love Your Word and love You enough to stand upon the truth of the Bible. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Pharaoh. Pharaoh's the other one. Pharaoh, it was Pharaoh? Okay.